Hi guys, thank you for joining. Okay, let's get started. Hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining our webinar today. My name is Luzon Lotring, the marketing manager here at Cardiolog Analytics, and I will go ahead and kick things off. Today's webinar is on accelerating your Microsoft 365 user adoption. A bit of housekeeping real quick. This webinar is being recorded. If you want to share this with a colleague, we will go ahead and send an email with the recording after today's session. And of course, if you have any questions, please send them through the questions box within the GoToWebinar panel. And we'll leave some time towards the end for Q&A. And you can also connect with us on Twitter with the Twitter handle at Cardiolog. In regards to the agenda for today's webinar, we will start out with a very short introduction. I'll talk a bit about Cardiolog Analytics and who we are. And then I'll talk a bit about what to measure in the different Microsoft 365 environments in order to drive adoption. And then I will show you how our engagement and analytic solutions can help you track your customers' usage of Microsoft 365 and also leverage the data to take action. And at the end, we'll be taking some Q&A. So you can send those questions throughout the course of the webinar. So I'll start off with a brief introduction. I'll talk a bit about who we are. So Cardiolog Analytics has been around for about 16 years now, since 2005, and we are based out of Boston. And over the past 16 years, we've been focused on analytics and engagement designed for SharePoint, Teams, Office 365. Our flagship solution is Cardiolog Analytics, and it's built specifically for internal platforms, including all versions of SharePoint from 2010 to 2019, as well as SharePoint Online, Microsoft Teams, OneDrive Exchange, and soon also Microsoft Viva. Our solutions is available both on-prem and as a SaaS version based on Power BI. Our goal is to help our customers to constantly improve Microsoft 365 based on how it's being used. So there are four pillars that we talk to our customers about. The first is monitor, which is tracking the usage within SharePoint, and Teams and OneDrive and Exchange and so on. The second would be engaging users, asking them what their needs are, what their pain points are, and what's not working for them. Then the next pillar is to enhance. We want to make sure that we are constantly improving SharePoint and Teams and so on based on those two pillars. The idea is to have actionable metrics, which will allow us to constantly make Microsoft 365 platforms better for our users. And then finally, the last pillar is securing. Securing Microsoft 365 by enforcing permissions and access, identifying breaches of information, and securing confidential data. In order to fully onboard and drive value with Microsoft 365, adoption tools are a must because value is assessed best by measuring usage and, and adoption. So once your organization has that information, you will then be able to make the necessary changes accordingly. Analyzing usage reports, patterns, and search logs will show what features users like and which they still haven't incorporated into their daily routines. And then administrators can take this information and create new training plans, for example, to encourage users to integrate more Microsoft 365 features into their workday. But what to measure to improve adoption? 
first would be content analytics. So analytics tools um, elevate content analytics from simple page views to influential content. This is struck by looking at comments, likes, ratings, followers, to show not only page clicks, but what users are truly looking for in the environment. And the second would be user analytics. The data gathered from user analytics is beyond what they are viewing. It looks at how users are interacting with each other. So instead of looking at average user behavior, we can analyze the champions, those top users, to leverage their influence by tracking their followers and how much content they are contributing. But apart from just tracking the content use and the user activity, another important step is actually using that information or the data or those insights to take action in order to really drive adoption. To get users to access the content that is important or that content not being accessed and also getting those inactive users to take advantage of all the amazing features in Microsoft 365 that will drive the overall productivity in the organization. And that is where communication and actually also training come in. Communication via the right channel and at the right time and in the case of inactive users or departments, also the right user will make sure that users are well informed of the change, its impact and benefits. So tailored training plans to equip users with the knowledge and ability to thrive through the Microsoft adoption journey help to facilitate this all important sustainable adoption. With that, we'll jump right into a demo to show you all of the above tracking and communication in action because Cardiolog Analytics, Microsoft 365, Usage Analytics combine usage data to provide rich analytical capability to measure adoption trends. Let's first look at SharePoint. We have a long list of reports across many dashboards where I'll show you some high level data. So if we look at the specific usage overview, we'll start here with this analytics part. And here you can see the SharePoint tree structure where I can track as many environments as I like. And in this overview dashboard, we are seeing data about content, about adoption, about search. Let me just close these filters so you can see it better. If we look here under adoption, here I'm showing data by departments. And this is who you know who is not very active so you can target those departments, those who need more training, those who need more support in order to help improve their adoption rates. Then if we look over here on the left at content, we can see the most active or the most popular content based on these page view numbers. So if we, for example, launched uh, a new HR site or we have a new policy, let's say a Corona policy, we can see if people are taking advantage of this new content. So once we know about this, we can launch a campaign and make sure people are in fact aware of this wonderful new HR site, or important policy, or maybe even the CEO's latest blog post or any other important updates. But what's really nice is we can also flip that around And now I'm showing all the inactive content. So all the content not being used often, or in this case, not at all, whether it's sites or documents or pages and more. So all the unused content. But once you know about this, you are empowered to take action and to make the improvements needed, whether you're talking about deleting it or archiving it, maybe notifying everyone about the site, uh, adding a link from the home page, or maybe even launching a campaign. So you can see there's lots of really wonderful, actionable data. So that is the action we take based on what's most popular or the unused content. But besides that, we can see even more information here, like who owns this content, to the size of the content, and all of this will also help you take action. 
just uh, for example, for really large content, um, maybe the admin can find out who owns it, contact that person, use the owner, uh, tell them that they have uh, 30 days, 60 days to get rid of the content um, or take action to improve it. Um, or it will be deleted. So I just went back to this report and I just also want to show you that at the top here you can see the different content types. So maybe I only want to see documents for most popular and least popular instead of all the content then I could also click on documents and immediately my dashboard will reflect that. So now you can see I'm only showing data about documents. Let's have a look at our smart metrics. So seeing metrics can obviously be very overwhelming and we want to show the bottom line that everyone can understand. This is just something extra that I quickly want to show you. So with this report we help to translate time wasted and bad user experiences into money. So basically we convert our data into money and time wasted so you and your organization are able to clearly see how the business really gets affected. So if we just quickly look here at money lost, this chart is comprised of metrics such as money lost on inactive user licenses, failed searches, slow pages, and then the same if we look here at time wasted, this chart is comprised of metrics such as time wasted on failed searches, creating unused content, that would be the items that were not viewed at all in the selected date range and then also time wasted on slow pages and what this will do this will give more meaning to those reports and put it in perspective to management so actions can be taken to help the business also save money then if i quickly hop into page interactions i'd like to show you this so this is really neat because this is where you can see who access the page what do people do while on the page? Like the home page, for example. Um, and then you can look at the page element and it tells us the whole story of how people are using certain pages. I also want to show you search optimization. There we go. So this is a really important and really helpful dashboard. For example, is everyone looking for the same document or the same page? If that's the case, it will be best to surface that content so it's easier to find. So here on the left, we can see the top search terms. And in this case, it is benefits. So if everyone in the company is searching for this term benefits, let's filter the entire dashboard by this one search term. And now you can see benefits has been searched almost 1,200 times. If I multiply that by over 60 seconds per search, that is a lot of time wasted looking for this one piece of content or this one search term. But now that we know about it, I can surface it. Maybe I can add a link from the home page with the employee benefits, and that will save a lot of wasted time and it will improve the overall productivity in the organization and help adoption as well. You may need to also look more in depth into your search schema or queries in order to improve them as well. If you have existing content on benefits, you may need to optimize the content or improve the search scheme to assist your users in connecting to it. And if you don't have a lot of helpful content regarding benefits that everyone is obviously searching for, this is a key indicator to start creating content to help your users get the information they need. And why this helps adoption? Because as technology becomes, becomes easier to use, people will come back and they will use it more. If we continue here, we can also see in terms of successful versus failed searches, that there is quite a high level of failed searches. This is something that is uh, even more concerning because a high failed search rate means that only half of those users actually clicked on the results. 
And what does that mean? Even more time is being wasted. But once we, once we have this data, we have a way of making improvements. And these are all metrics that impact adoption in a negative way. If it's difficult for me as a user to find content, I'm not going to be very eager to, eager to come back and use this technology again. Let's hop straight into the Microsoft 365 overview dashboards. So if we look here at adoption, here you can see very importantly the percentage of active versus inactive users in each of these Microsoft 365 environments. For example, we can see the different departments and how active those or inactive those departments are in SharePoint versus Teams versus Yammer versus Exchange versus OneDrive. And you can set it to a specific date range that you want to see the data of. And this is a great indication of, where, of whether the users are actually starting to adopt to this new platform and this new application or this new um, environment by seeing which departments you can possibly connect to and make sure that they get the necessary support and assistance and training in order to use these specific environments to their full potential. If we hop over to engagement, we can track the user's engagement over time in these Microsoft 365 environments. So you can clearly see also in terms of office and department where there's maybe a lack of adoption and in terms of specific environments you can see which platforms are being used most to view and read content where are they commenting and replying the most where are they liking the most content where are they sharing the most documents or files and this will also help you to understand what's happening in terms of those environments, whether the users are actually taking advantage of it and using it to its full capacity. And then if we look here at consumption, very important in these different environments, you can see if users are taking advantage of these platforms such as Xiaomi and Exchange and Teams and which of these platforms they are using for certain actions. So where are most messages or emails being sent? Where are mo most files and attachments being sent? Where are most meetings being held? If you want in your organization all the meetings to happen in Teams and you see that clearly that is not the case, then you know to make sure that the users know the amazing meeting features in Teams so they will start using that platform to have all their meetings and the same year for storage used that is only applicable to SharePoint Exchange and OneDrive. So, and then I want to hop into some dashboards specifically targeted at Teams. So if we look here at the usage overview, what's really nice is that we can see who our top teams are, which is really great. And also how active each top team is. And that gives a really good benchmark of what a productive or what a successful team looks like for you. And very important, you can see the last activity date. So if they did not respond in 30 days, you can archive those teams or you know those are the teams that need a little bit more training and support. If you look at engagement overview, in order to monitor usage, you have to review reports to understand these emerging trends. So for example, if we look here at access type, this usage report shows that not many users are using a specific device to access Teams. So what does this indicate? That user, users are not sure how to do so. So now we know that we can, we know this, so we can post maybe step-by-step -step installation instructions for this specific device which will help drive usage of a wider device range. Also, if we look at private chat messages versus team messages, this report shows that users are primarily using 
T messages. So this is a bit of a problem because if it was maybe the other way around, then you might want to review your team scenarios because then these users are maybe chatting outside of the initial teams and channels that were set up for them. Because if most of the messages are chat messages, then it's not exactly what your organization was obviously striving for. So by having these valuable insights, you can reach out to your users in order to change their user behavior and that will help them to be more productive and more collaborative and to adopt to these different platforms and take full advantage of them and their capabilities. If we look, for example, at influential users, we are still in Teams. In this dashboard, you can see down to the user level. And with this info, you can drive adoption by finding out who your influential users are, those top champions. And you can see who's using Teams the most. And then once you know who these champions are, like I said earlier, you can reach out to them, invite them to share some tips, host a quick session, explaining some how-tos on using Teams, which will then motivate and support those inactive users. Sorry if I scroll further down. You can see which users are more active and you can filter that by the number of members, um, channel messages, normal messages, replies, likes, really any data that you're curious about to see which teams are and which users are more active or inactive. And that is where you know where to focus your training on and support in order to prove your adoption rates. You can go more in depth here. Once again, you can filter this or sort this by office or department. And um, so you can get more insights on how different locations or different groups are using Teams and also what the top level of activity looks like. And then I quickly want to hop also into, I want to show you as much as I possibly can without running out of time. So I also want to show you influential content. So for each team and channel, you can see if they are sharing content in tabs or sending attachments. So say for example, customers want to give training for teams and we know a specific team um, is not sharing content, for example. Then that might be because it's a functionality that they might not know about. So once again, when we train, we know where to focus our training and we know where to focus our support in order to prove exactly this. It is important to track users' productivity within Teams or within um, any of the other Microsoft 365 environments um, to ensure that users are using all of the functionalities in these environments and so not just using, for example, Teams as a chat-based platform, but actually using it to be productive and be collaborative. So we don't just want them using the different environments, but using it to its full potential. I think we have enough time so I can quickly also hop into augmented analytics. Yes. Augmented analytics drives SharePoint adoption and users productivity with next-gen SaaS-based data analytics maps and insights. So augmented analytics pinpoints the problematic areas on the SharePoint page so you can take action based on the data. So what's really neat about augmented analytics is that the insights, I'll show you those now, are actionable because it connects directly to an action you can take to solve a problem on the platform. These actionable insights are extremely helpful because they serve as a guiding light for what you should prioritize on your platform to help drive business productivity and to help drive adoption further. Visualizing the track data in different formats helps with easy interpretation, obviously, easy analysis. Um, let me just go ahead and show you. So we actually track every single click that the users make. And we are able to display that data in different ways. So first of all, you'll be able to see each and every click performed on the page, like you can see now. So you can see around most of the 
buttons or headers or even images we have the most clicks but maybe you prefer to see the button clicks by number then you can also object it and then here if i hover over each of these different links and images we'll see the total clicks on that link or on that image so we can see aggregated total links on each um, link button or the actual clicks or points we can also visualize this as a heat map to emphasize even more where the hotspots on the page are, for example. So similar to cardiolog analytics data that I've just showed you in the reports, you can also use different kinds of filters here with this data. I'll show you some of these filters. So you could see interaction from a specific date range or other filters will include things like filtering by department or filtering by location or other attributes that you might want to use and it's very valuable to see what part of the page such as this home page is being accessed or used by folks from different departments another layer here is the insights we turn that on folks this is great because we know not only where they clicked on the page but also on the next pages we are trying to help customers not just get the data for example a thousand clicks and so on but also add some insights so here for example you can see that we are saying that 74 percent of the visitors who oh sorry who clicked on this link to view this list of all articles clicked on the third article on the next page so what does it suggest add a link to it directly on the home page and that will save up to 104 minutes a week so all over this page are these very helpful insights that will not only suggest you to take action but also tell you what action you can take in order to improve so the idea is that with these insights we go one step beyond just the raw data or the number of clicks but give these additional insights for our customers on where they might want to take a little bit more notice and suggestions on how they can improve different areas on the page. And now let's hop into Cardiolog Engage. And I will show you how this amazing tool uses all of these insights and data that I've shown you to take action, to drive productivity, collaboration, consumption in all of those different environments, and also get valuable insights directly from the users and all of this will help you to drive adoption of the different Microsoft 365 environments. Let's start a new campaign. By increasing adoption, users can also be much more productive. And Engage allows you to engage your users in order to, to expose them to new or relevant content and features. It enables you to establish new methods in which to communicate and these methods maximize the potential success to gain the user's attention and complete the relevant tasks, such as telling users in a specific team to check out a file before the end of the day or informing teams or individuals of assignments that have to be done. But let me show you from scratch what I mean. So say for example, I want to skip this. Say for example, I've seen in the data that they are users who are inactive they did not um, perform a search they didn't visit a specific page they didn't interact with microsoft teams or with yammer let's use teams here as an example ever or maybe in the last 30 days in the last 15 days then you want to take action so you have these insights you know that there are users or departments who did not take action, who are not active, who did not adopt the platform. So instead of just having this info, you can actually do something with it. You can do something with this data using Cardiolog Engage. Or maybe you want to reach out to everyone, or you want to send a very specific message to users who belong to a specific department in SharePoint or a specific team in Teams based on the data and you want to send the right message to very spe 
particular group of users. So let's use everyone just for the sake of the demonstration. So how do you want to send them a message? Maybe they are in the sales team, they're out in the field all day, a quick text message with a reminder about that policy we mentioned earlier, a new corona policy that they have to read, or a link to the new um, a link to the home page with a lot of new important content that they have to access or maybe they're very active in SharePoint but not in Teams and you want to send them a quick pop-up right within the SharePoint page which is really neat it will pop up maybe as a header or a footer or you can send them a message right within Teams that will be as a channel message and you can send them a link or a reminder of content that they have to access. So this message, you can then design this message, you can write in the text what you want to write. There could even be a call to action. Maybe you are inviting them to training, so you can send them an RSVP. An RSVP could be the call to action, or you can ask, ask them for feedback. That would be an open question. You can say, I've noticed that you haven't been active in a specific um, platform in the last 15 days. Please give me some feedback as to the why that is. So you will type that in here, and then the call to action will be an open question. So you can get these extremely valuable insights directly from the users. And very few things will inform you as much and give you such deep insights to help adoption as feedback directly from the users that you want to adopt the platforms. And then the last step would be trigger. You can send this message immediately. You can schedule it to be sent at a specific date or time, or you can trigger it based on the behavior in SharePoint. So maybe when they are scrolling down a specific page or viewing a specific um, piece of content or viewing something on a specific page um, for more than a certain amount of time, then you know they are engaged they are focused, so what better time for this pop-up to appear or this message to come through telling them about this content or this new feature or new capability um, in order for them to take charge and to, to actually take action and start using the platform to its full potential. So let me hop back to the presentation. That is the end of my presentation, by the way. So please do send us any questions you may have um, in the GoToWebinar questions box. I'm quickly checking for questions in the questions pane. I see two questions. Um, I have a question here from Teresa. Teresa wants to know what is the licensing for this. So, uh, Teresa, this is a SaaS platform. So, a yearly subscription based on the number of users being tracked. Um, so, I'd be happy to send you a link to the pricing page and, and get you also other additional information um, once we maybe get some more detail from you about the, the amount of users you want to track and target with these tools. So reach out to us. Um, the next slide will be our details. And then you can just uh, send us a message there and we'll reach out to you um, and give you the feedback or give you some specifics on the question you have. Um, I have another question here from Sarah, 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 oh, I'm sure it's Sarah. Sarah wants to know how easy is it to deploy? So Sarah, um, what's really neat about this tool is because it's designed for the different Microsoft 365 platforms, there's no need for customization when you want to deploy. So honestly, with our setup wizard, you can get it up and running within an hour and already start to collect data. And I just also want to tell you, this was not a question, I would just like to share it with you, that we have a trial. Um, we have a free trial as well as a proof of concept for people who want a longer evaluation 
or maybe try more environments and features versus our limited free trial. Um, and I can definitely share some more information about what's included in each. Um, once again, just reach out to us. I will go to the last slide so you can see our contact details. There we go. So yeah, I will wrap up our session today. We are almost out of time. Um, and those are the only questions that I see. If there's something you think of, you can also just uh, reach out to us directly. Um, we have recorded this webinar and we'll be sending out a recording in the next day or two if you wish to share this with colleagues who are maybe unable to attend or there's something you want to look over again. Uh, we invite you to visit us at www.cardiologanalytics.com or you can tweet us at, at cardiolog. And for more information and helpful tips, you can check out our blog at blog.inlog.com. And for more information, you can contact us directly at info at inflock.com. And also email us there to schedule a personalized demo of any of our solutions or to set up that free trial that I mentioned earlier. A huge thank you to everyone who joined us and everyone who sent any questions. And I will be sending all of you the presentation in the next day or two. Have a good rest of your day and take care.